My great fantasy is to be the cure machine, go around the world and have every single person open their mouth and give them the magic pill. As a woman and as a nurturer and as somebody trying to change something on the planet, that motivates me every single day. To have somebody die in your arms with Huntington's is like one of the most ghastly experiences. Huntington's affects movement, mood, and memory. So it's a triple whammy. The movement part is called chorea after the Greek word choreography because it looks like a big dance. All parts of your body are in constant motion. It hit her when I was still in high school. Her driving became, you know, very erratic. And say, Mom, you know, how come you drive that way? So she said, Well, you want to walk? She was also just getting more and more depressed, more vacant. When I was 22, my sister was five years older. You know, Dad told us, your mom has been diagnosed with the disease that killed her brothers. Because she has it, each one of you has a one in two chance of getting it. And if you get it, your kids have a one in two chance of getting it. It was like three generations just wiped out simultaneously. We were all hanging on to each other, sobbing. The passivity of just waiting for this to come and kill me was unbearable. When I was going to graduate school, I decided that I would do my thesis on being at risk for Huntington's. The thing I was the most terrified of, I would just study headlong. Dad decided that he was going to start the Hereditary Disease Foundation. How do we find a cure for mom and for the world? That was very healing. At one of the workshops, everyone thought, well, if you could find the Huntington's gene, and you could fix it. Easier said than done, of course. <laughs> yeah. In every single cell of our body, we have 46 chromosomes, and each one of these chromosomes has six feet of DNA folded up. Take that out and stick it on end to end. It goes from here to the moon and back 500 times. How would you actually find a Huntington's gene on all of that zillions of miles of DNA back in the 70s? You couldn't even figure out how to find a gene. We were looking for a mistake. How do you even figure out what's normal from not normal? You have to find these little markers and find out where they live. And that takes forever. People just thought, that's never gonna happen for 100 years. So then I thought, well, 100, I might as well get going. If you study a really, really, really big family, lots of different generations, that's more powerful because it's impacting everybody. In Venezuela, there were these really gigantic families, the Huntington's, and some of them were intermarrying. We thought if we could find somebody that had a double dose of Huntington's, both parents having Huntington's, and they would inherit it from both parents, that could give us a clue, because that person wouldn't have anything normal to confuse works. We went down to Barranquitas, and this woman, she looked just like my mom. It was just like, wow, I'm home. So I gave her a hug. All of a sudden, this gentleman pulled up and said, I'm really worried about my family because I think he's, they call it lost, okay? When you have Huntington's, you're lost. This kid was very stiff and like Cheshire cat because that's part of juvenile Huntington's. Because the child had such a gigantic expansion, his DNA, you could see it. When we found it, I was just jumping up and down and like, yeah, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. <laughs> we changed the entire way that the genes were approached and genetic diseases were approached. Jim Watson credits are finding the DNA marker in 1983 with launching the Human Genome Project.
At the moment, there's no treatment for Huntington's. Whatever's going to slow down Huntington's is going to influence Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's, all of these different diseases. It's in their grasp.